Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to one in what is haram between couples to do. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. Uh, a number of people have asked that what is haram uh, to do when engaged with intimacy? What are the acts that we should be uh, aware of that are not allowed to do? Uh, so again, this is a very sexually explicit question. And so again, uh, you know, uh, be advised that this is not a talk that is meant for uh, young children. So uh, the question therefore is what is haram between couples to do? With regards to what is forbidden in the Sharia, Two things are explicitly forbidden. Two things are forbidden directly in the text of the Quran and Sunnah. Uh, and the first of these is uh, anal intercourse. This is something that is absolutely forbidden without a doubt, uh, according to the Ahadith. And we can infer it from the Quran. It is not explicit, but it has been derived from the Quran. And uh, the, the, as for the Quran implicitly, Allah says in the Quran, Nisa'ukum harthu lakum fa'tu harthakum anna shi'tum. Your women are, your wives are like a cultivation or like a field unto you. And therefore, approach your wives however you wish to approach them. Now, the fact that Allah mentions a cultivation, our scholars have derived, in fact, even the tabi'un have derived, that the meaning therefore is that the cultivation occurs obviously uh, from the vagina, it doesn't occur uh, from uh, the other organ. And therefore, there is an indirect uh, disapproval of uh, anal intercourse. As for the ahadith, there are numerous ahadith reported by over seven sahaba with over you know 10 different chains uh, regarding this concept of uh, forbidding anal intercourse. And in fact, this verse that I just quoted you, according to a number of authentic ahadith, it was revealed because somebody asked the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam about a, a, a certain issue of, of sex and sexuality. And this verse came down to respond uh, to that. And uh, there are a number of ahadith that forbid uh, anal intercourse. Of them is the hadith in Abu Dawood that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever uh, comes to his wife while she is menstruating, that's the second prohibition, we'll talk about that, or uh, from her back, meaning from uh, her anus, from her back, uh, has disbelieved in what has been revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in the other hadith in Sunnah An-Nisa'i, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah will not look at a man who approaches his wife from her back. Allah will not look at him, meaning Allah is angry at him, Allah is displeased at him. And in uh, Sunnah An-Nisa'i as well, a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, O Messenger, of Allah, may I engage with intercourse from behind? Okay, uh, that's the way that he phrased the question, that from behind. So the Prophet said, uh, it is permissible. Then the man stood up to go back, then he called him back and he said, wait, what did you mean when you say from behind? Did you mean you're gonna turn her around, meaning that like yani basically that her back is facing you, but from her uh, front, her vagina, or did you mean from her anus? He literally asked, the Prophet literally asked this, that which of her, uh, uh, which of her uh, orifices, which of her openings did you uh, uh, reference? Did you mean that from her vagina, but with her back facing you, meaning of course the sexual position that is different, or did you mean uh, from her adbar, yani from her dubur, meaning from her anus, then the Prophet said, Inna Allah la yastahyi min al haq. Allah is not embarrassed at speaking the truth. Do not approach women from their anuses. This is an explicit hadith in Sunan An Nisa'i. And we mention here the verse as well do not approach women, uh, sorry, that Allah says in the Quran that Allah is not embarrassed of the uh, truth. And, and uh, there are a number of also uh, narrations in this regard uh, that uh, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala uh, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, he said, O Messenger of Allah, you know, I have done something that uh, will uh, destroy me. I have done something that is going to destroy me. Uh, and uh, the Prophet said, what is this? What have you done? So he said, last night uh, I engaged with intercourse with my wife, but I turned her around. 
I turned her around, meaning that, uh, again, the, 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 the sexual position was that she was on her stomach, but he engaged in vaginal intercourse. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ allowed Umar that this is not a sin to do. In other words, sexual positions is something that is uh, allowed, whichever position you want, but it is vaginal intercourse. Uh, so the first thing that is completely forbidden is uh, anal intercourse. There's no question about that. Uh, the second uh, that is completely forbidden as well, uh, but to a lesser degree, but it is still haram. Both of them are haram, but there's degrees of haram. And the uh, the second thing that is haram or sinful is to engage in intercourse uh, during the period of the menses, that during that time frame, vaginal intercourse is not allowed. Vaginal intercourse is not allowed. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, um, Oh, sorry, the, let me begin with the Quran. The Quran says, Surah the baqarah verse 222, the Quran says, عَنِ الْمَحِيلِ They ask you about the menses. قُلْ هُوَ أَذَن Say, it is something that is an irritation. So, فَاعْتَزِلُوا النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيلِ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوهُنَّ حَتَّى يَطْهُرْنَ فَإِذَا تَطَهَّرْنَ فَأْتُهُنَّ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ So, avoid approaching women during the time of their menses and do not come close to them until they purify themselves, right? وَلَا تَقْرَبُوهُنَّ حَتَّى يَطْهَرْنَ فَإِذَا تَطَهَّرْنَ Once they have done the ghusl, then you may approach them from where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you. Ibn Abbas said, from where Allah has allowed you, meaning the vagina, not the anus. So again, this verse has also been used uh, to indirectly forbid anal intercourse. But the Quran is very explicit about uh, uh, having intercourse during the menses, and that is why there is unanimous consensus amongst all the scholars of Islam without exception that engaging in intercourse during the menses is a sinful act. And then the scholars differ. Do you have to give a kafara? How much kafara? Yani, uh, expiation, yani, uh, money, monitor, and whatnot. That's a secondary issue. Uh, and it is definitely good to give charity if that happens and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not do it again. It is something that should be uh, avoided. And Aisha radiallahu anha reports that once uh, when her menses began, she was lying next to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she became embarrassed. This was been early in the marriage. And so she left the bed and she w went to sleep somewhere else. The Prophet sallallahu said, what is the matter? So she explained that she had begun her menses. So the Prophet sallallahu said, don't worry, put on another garment and then come next to me. And of course, the meaning here is that uh, once the menses have begun, of course, the lady does not become najis, which is uh, something that some other faith traditions, they believe to this day, there are some faith traditions uh, including Orthodox Judaism as well, that when the lady is in her menses, that uh, her persona, uh, her body should not be touched. Anything she touches as well, it is uh, becomes impure. And in our Sharia, that is not the case. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised uh, Aisha that don't worry about this, just protect the blood. We don't want the blood to come, you know. Uh, and in those they did, they didn't have the type of menstrual pads that uh, we do now. And so he advised her to put another garment and then come back into bed. And um, in another, uh, in another uh, hadith uh, in Sahih Bukhari, uh, a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asked that, O Messenger of Allah, you know, what is permissible for me and my wife when she's in her menses? He literally asked the question, what is halal? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, that you may do everything other than intercourse. Isna'u kulla shay'in illa nikah. Everything is permissible kissing and fondling and stimulation with the hands and with the other body parts, all of this is permissible. Uh, and uh, anything that the two want to do, they want to play around between themselves with it is permissible, except for the actual vaginal intercourse. So the actual penetration is not allowed. Anything other than this, it is allowed. Now, some of the early scholars, they said that uh, the man should avoid touching the woman's uh, thighs or any area, even the groin area. And the reason for this, of course, is that they wanted the blood to not be touched. In our times, uh, because there are menstrual pads and because it can be main uh, the, the area can be maintained in a better manner, the main point is that the man should avoid uh, that blood. And uh, if it does come on, then afterwards it can be washed off, but there should not be an intentional uh, wanting to obviously touch that area, uh, sorry, the, to touch the blood, because obviously that blood is najis and we don't willingly uh, you know, put najis onto our bodies. Obviously, if it happens, it happens and you just wash yourself it's not so realize that 
touching najasat uh, is something that is discouraged, but in and of itself, if you have to do it, you have to do it. When you change uh, uh, the diaper when, or even when you cleanse yourself, I mean, you're touching najis, right? Um, but you don't want to do that. And if it does happen, then you wash yourself off uh, as soon as possible. So uh, the correct opinion therefore, inshallah ta'ala, and this is the majority opinion, is that everything is permissible during the menstrual cycle other than actual vaginal uh, intercourse. Now, um, what else is forbidden? Uh, so in reality, nothing else is forbidden unless there's going to be a psychological harm or unless another ruling of the Sharia is going to be is going to be uh, uh, contravened. And uh, in, in our next question, I'll, I'll answer in more detail the one aspect of oral intercourse. I'll answer that in another video. You can see that uh, inshallah ta'ala in the next one. Uh, but I want to now point out one thing that uh, realize that sexual habits and sexual mores, they vary from time to place to society to culture. And just because, and I need you to pay attention to this, just because a certain society disdains a certain sexual practice does not make that practice haram. Understand this point. In, in human history, every society has developed uh, you know, its own mores and its own habits and its own mechanisms, if you like, of what is, uh, you know, uh, stimulating and whatnot within the bedroom. And uh, the Sharia has not come to dictate cultures. You may not like it, and that is your prerogative. Understand, you have a right to, within your bedroom, to not do something that you think is, you know, uh, inappropriate or whatnot. But don't bring religion into it and say it is haram just because your culture does not like it. And the best example for this actually is that we have an authentic narration that demonstrates for us that between Mecca and Medina, there were sexual variations and the Sharia adopted a neutral stance that, hey, whatever you want to do is permissible. The Sharia came and did not prefer one over the other and said, well, however you want to do it, that's between the two of you. And the, uh, the example here, Ibn Abbas narrates that uh, the Ansar of Medina used to live with the, the Jewish people and uh, the Ansar adopted the sexual habits of the Jews. And in Judaism to this day, Orthodox Judaism to this day, Orthodox Judaism, no position is allowed other than the woman is on her back, which is called the missionary position. No position is allowed. You cannot have any other position. The woman has to be on her back and there must be a sheet over the couple and they have a lot of laws uh, in this in this regard. So the Ansar living with the Jews, they adopted that culture because they viewed the Jews as being, you know, uh, uh, superior to them. They, they had they had knowledge of the book. And the Quraysh ibn Abbas said they had no such qualms and they would have intercourse from every position. The hadith actually says, Ibn Abbas says that uh, شرحن, they would, uh, you know, flip their women around whichever position they wanted to, right? So they would have in every position they wanted to, they would engage in intercourse, whether it was on their backs or whether it was turned around or whether it was on their sides. This is in the hadith of Ibn Abbas, right? So a muhajir man from Mecca married an Ansari lady from Medina and he attempted to engage in intercourse with her the way that he was accustomed to. I'm quoting you the hadith here or the statement of Ibn Abbas. And the lady refused and the lady said, no, we can only have in intercourse on our backs, right? That's what we are accustomed to. And the news spread amongst the people that there's a major marital dispute. You know, the talk is getting now out because there's a marital problem happening. And they're wondering, well, who is right and wrong? And the uh, the news approached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so Allah Azza wa Jal revealed in the Quran, the famous verse that I just mentioned to you, that Nisa'ukum harthu lakum fa'tu harthakum anna shi'tum. Your women are like a field unto you, so approach your women however you please. This is in the Quran, however you please. Allah is not dictating there is a position that is haram halal. No, however the two of you want to do this. And this means that in, in essence, the man from Mecca basically was allowed to do whatever he wanted to do. And uh, uh, the hadith uh, of the Prophet ﷺ was also very clear that you may approach your women, you know, while they're on their backs or while they're uh, um, uh, turned around, uh, as long as you approach it from the uh, vagina, from the vaginal uh, uh, orifice. So one has to only take into account that uh, anal intercourse is not allowed. As for sexual positions, whatever the couple wants to do, that is something that is uh, permissible to them. Now, there's been a lot of questions I've gotten about, obviously, we're living at a time where, again, let's be honest here, brothers and sisters, the uh, 
<clears throat> the uh, fetishes that are now prevalent. You know, I'm getting all of these different questions. And subhanAllah, I don't want to go into detail here, believe it or not, there should be some haya and whatnot in this regard. I'm just going to say generically that, look, whatever is happening in the privacy of the bedroom, and it is not beyond the two things that are haram, which is anal intercourse. And the anal intercourse literally means, uh, literally means the penetration. That is what is haram. Or uh, the intercourse during menses. Anything other than this, if one wishes to engage with one's spouse, whether it's role playing or using toys or anything of this nature, one could find like one, a person can say, I don't like it, I don't find it noble. And you know what, I sympathize with you 110%. Okay, that's, but that's you and me or that's some people. To say that it is sinful is different than to say that it is not noble. And I need us to understand this and differentiate it. Look, I'll be the first to say that there is a problem of over-sexualization in the world that we live in. And because of this, it is affecting our marriages and it is affecting our bedrooms as well. And it is affecting our social, uh, sorry, our sexual fetishes as well. If we were living in a pure uh, environment where all of this you know, was not around us, we would not be asking such questions. That is the truth. Still, Still, what can we do? It's not our fault we're born in the time and place we're born into. It's not our fault we're aware of all that's going on. It's not our fault at some level that we're exposed to what we are exposed to. So yes, we are being affected. Yes, society around us is impacting us. So we have to differentiate uh, purity and nobility from haram and halal. Something might be ignoble, something might not be noble, it doesn't necessarily make it sinful in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, I say that all of these, you know, uh, uh, personal, you know, things that uh, a person might find pleasure in within a marriage, as long as no haram is being crossed, you're not doing zina with somebody you're not allowed to, you're not watching something you should not watch, and you are not doing the two things that we said are haram, it is best to be quiet and the couple can decide, you know, what they want to do in this regard. And for video i mean let a woman have that time of the month to herself i mean there's a lot that goes on that men can't even understand some people go through pain some people it's hell some people enjoy it some people i don't know different experiences for every woman um i mean like i said let the woman have her period in peace there can always be time for everything else afterwards and another thing that we're faced with nowadays is uh, people having a fetish for this thing, the one this, the one that. I mean, people differ. It's up to you and your partner to agree on what's acceptable in your relationship and what's not. Like I said, a big shout out to the person that suggested this. And um, let me know what you guys think. What are your thoughts on this video? Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video. you